This is how different your shit is and how game changing it is. Now, I know your girl, Poe Johnson, right? Yeah. Now, when I met her, she was gay. Yes. But then she told me she had a boyfriend, and I went, man, what the fuck? <laughs> Who was this guy? <laughs> And, and yeah, you, you like a game changer in her life. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. where do you meet Poet, and how does this happen, man? How do you get her to be be straight? Because uh, <laughs> she was gone. Oh, no, well, that was for, for a while as well. Gone. For a long time. She on TV being gone. Oh, no, I, I didn't even know. So I started. You didn't even know? Didn't have a clue. She's a fine, fine girl. Man. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing over there? Come back over here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just for I'm going to learn how to fight today the right way. This is Liam McGeary. I'm the light heavyweight champion for Bellator. This is 50.com. Ah, beat your motherfucking ass. I'm not, not you, I'm talking about them. I'm them. <laughs> them. Them. Yo, Liam, what's happening, man? Where you from? I'm from, I'm from the UK. From um, the UK? Yeah, I did, I did a fair bit of traveling around. Um, I lived in a, on an island in between England and France. Mm. There's, a, there's a little island called Jersey. Um, it's nine miles that way, five miles that way. Tiny mm. little place. But yeah, I, I lived over there for 10 years and then found myself over here. And what, what made you come over to the States? Because did they have that, uh, they had the, you know, the MMA style fighting there too? They did, but it wasn't as big over here. I just came over here looking for a bigger and better fight. Oh, so over there it's kind of almost like blood sport or the Kumite or No, 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 no. I mean, it's it's picking up, but the the level over here, the, 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 stand, the, the size of the shows... Is, the commercialism of it. Yeah. Is, is if you want to be a superstar in it. Yeah, you pretty much. You, you, want to, you want to be a world champion, a real world champion, you come over to America and you win the world, to be a world champion. So that was my way of thinking. Mm. The shows back home, they, I didn't, because I lived in Jersey, I'd left England, and then I, I didn't really go into, the, it wasn't in that scene. So I was struggling to find a fight. I was, I was fighting over in Jersey, and then my friend was like, listen, I know somebody over in America, why don't you come and sell all your stuff and, and come over here? Mm. So I saw it sound. That was exactly what I did. How do you even go through the ranks of, of uh, being a contender? Uh, what do you have to do? Where do you go first? Where do you practice it? Who needs to see you in order for somebody to say, you know what, we're going to give you a shot on TV inside this shit? I guess it's right place, right time sometimes, you know. You have to have the luck. You have to be able to fight. Um, but for one. For one, yeah. You have to be able to fight, you know. Um, you have to build yourself up on these, on these little shows. The, the smokers that you have to do is... Some of them, are, you could be fighting someone who's not even your weight category, but just to get a fight under, under your belt. It's all about the experience, you know. These top shows are not going to touch you if you just walked in off the street. Mm. You know, you need, to, you need to train, you need to fight, you need to, to build up and, 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 and keep fighting on these little shows, you know. Mm. As soon as somebody sees you, they'll recognize you, a, a fighter will stand out. That's when you start getting noticed. Mm. I happened to get noticed pretty early on, so it was, I was lucky. Right. Now, you think some of them got to do that you got good hair and you light skin? That's, that's, that might be. Because you got to look, man. It may, it may have something to do with, you know what I mean? I, I, I started, I was working there. And you speak, yeah, you got that accent. I oh, know. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. stand all the way out. Yeah. Oh. Ain't too many, man, let me find that you don't talk like that for real. And you get outside <laughs> of here, you like, it's hell, a man, so shit. <laughs> What's the ideal fight for you? Well, the next ideal fight is what I'm getting is Phil Davies. Mm -hmm. So they, I had to wait till from, for Saturday. King Mo and Phil Davies were fighting, and that determined who was going to fight for my belt next. Mm. So uh, I wanted Phil Davies. He's ranked number four in the world. He came over from the UFC. He's beaten everybody in the uh, in a lot of heavyweight division. He's done a tournament. He won that. Beat King Mo. That's what he needed to do uh, to, to face me. Mm. So uh, I'm, I'm happy that uh, I get to face Phil, Phil Davies. Mm. And I'm also happy the fact that this could happen in Brooklyn. At the, at the Barclays? At the Barclays, yeah. Wow. That's what we're trying to get it for, because mm. the law's been passed now in New York. Let's get MMA in New York, you know. It's, 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 it's a great night. I mean, it's entertaining to tell. You get it's all these... It's New York, baby. Dude, and everybody loves a good fight. You everybody know? love a good fight. Down man. in Brooklyn, you go, you just go, it's, it's, it's local, you know, it's real close. Man, good. you know how many ass whoopers then went down in Brooklyn? Exactly, exactly. I'm talking about since the beginning of time. Yeah. What is the biggest injury, injury that you have sustained during uh, MMA? was my knee, man. It's, it's been kept me out since the Tito fight. You know, I, I, that was back in September. I had surgery. I've been out of action ever since. It's been uh, laying on the sofa, just flicking through the TV, trying to get just bored out of my mind. So, but blow your brain. Oh, dude, you go crazy. God. I mean, the only good thing is I, I get. You got the title. 
Oh, you have the title, yeah. Okay. Yep. So I was, I was looking. In the title, right that. by your knee, like. Exactly. So it was all worth it. <laughs> it was all worth it. <laughs> you, you, at the end of the day, sometimes like when you sitting down and whatnot after a, 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 a fight like that, and it's taking such a toll on your body. Did you, do you ever at any point? And it's okay, man. It's me, baby. It's me. You, ever, you ever say, man? You know what? I don't want to do this shit no more. No. Never. No, never. Never. No. So even with the injuries, is that shit give you a rush? You yeah, know? man. I, These I, are bad. I just love fighting. Mm. It's. It, uh, I just, I just enjoy fighting. It's just, I don't know what it is about it. It's just, I just enjoy doing it. You, you remember the first fight you ever got into in your life? First one. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Man, walk me through that. Um, I was in school, and uh, there wasn't many black kids in my school, so it was like. You black? Yeah, in, oh, in, okay. in my school I was. You know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. I'm sorry. So, uh, so yeah, so hippie, it was, it was constantly nigga this, nigga that, nigga this, right? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, Whoa. Man, it was bad. He's a white guy. He's a white guy. Yeah. Oh my god. So, so I this in the UK. In the UK. So racism is the same way worldwide. Yeah, it? man. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, it's been going on since I've ever, ever since I can remember. Oh man, you yeah. had to get in. I've had it in my head the whole time growing up, known as the only black kid around the corner. You know. Wow. So it was, uh, it was rough. You know. So it, I had to do what I had to do, uh -huh. but I didn't realize I just, you know, one of them ones when you're a kid, you're like, you just take it. This kid's bigger than me. I just need to, I don't know what to do. Mm. And then one day he picked me up and he's hit my head on this, on, you know, the, the hooks, what you put your coat on. Yeah, yeah. So he smacked my head on this hooks and that's it. I lost the plot and I just punched him straight in the face. He dropped me. I grabbed hold of a table. I think I pinned him up against the wall and I'm fucking punching him in the face and I'm hitting him and I didn't want to stop. Three people were trying to drag me off of me. I was not letting go. I, wow. I, I lost it and I was like, right, that was it. From that day on, no one ever laid a hand on me, said something wrong to me. Otherwise, I'd, I'd just be like, right, you know what? Let's fucking sort this out. Hey, this is what I don't understand though. Like, why, why when y'all uh, y'all see y'all done blatantly knock somebody out, y'all to come hammer him in the head? It's like, hey, he's down already. He's about to die. What are you doing? Uh, you know what it is? I think because you're that caught up in a, in a, in a moment, you've just knocked someone on their ass, you have to follow through. Right, right. You only stop the fight when the referee tells you to stop the fight. Gotcha. So that's why sometimes you, that's, that's completely overboard. If the guy's a dickhead mm. then and deserves a slap, then why not give him a punch afterwards, you know? Once you know you've knocked him out, mm. nothing sweet and just going bang. Once they're unconscious, you know. I can do So every time they rewind that fight, they're gonna see that last punch that motherfucker got me on that. He, I was out cold and there was unnecessary and he fucking punched me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I had that happen to me in my own last fight. No. Yeah, I was telling him because I was trying to quit. I was like, hey, I can't take no more, man. Hey, stop the fight. That referee is saying, what you wanna do? And he knew what the fuck I was saying. And he was trying, he was fucking with me. <laughs> And What'd I said, say? stop the fucking fight, please. Stop. He said, why? I said, because I'm dying. I'm about to have a heart attack. And as I'm saying, I'm about to have a heart attack. The guy comes over, punched me in my good eye. Everything turned purple. You know what I'm saying? So now, a fight is over. I can't see how to get out the ring. <laughs> you know, it was the worst, man. My next interview with you, dog, I'm coming over to Church Street. Man, you gotta get teach me some shit. Do it, definitely, yeah, man. Can we do I'm, that? I'm down for that, yeah, for sure. Hey, I did it with John the Bones Jones. This was a week before he uh, fought Shogun. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. folded me up inside the ring. Oh no. But, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, not the ring, but over there. Yeah, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, it was it was bad. I'm sure I could show it you was, a few it was, tricks. Man, show me some shit. Man. No problem. No, Already, right, get me right, baby. Definitely. Get me right, definitely. Man, like I always say, you just can't say you're really something. You gotta be, man. We over, and we out of here. Do I have something in my eye? Y'all go to commercial. Don't kiss them holes in the mouth unless you got to. People frisk me if I'm dirty, homie.